Evolutionists claim that many viral infections and earlier life forms have resulted in the DNA of those viruses being passed on ancestrally in later evolving organisms. One example of the failure of this claim is that the PTERV1 is found in the rhesus monkey, olive baboon, and African great apes, but not in humans. This makes it clear that if that the ERVs are evidence of common design, not evolution, since had man and the great apes shared a common ancestor, the great apes would also share the PTERV1 with humans. Okay now, so PTERV1 is in rhesus monkeys, baboons and great apes, but is missing in humans. Now I'm not going to steal anyone else's thunder, so I'm recommending that you watch a video by God Lessons, the link can be found in the description box below, that clearly explains why this is so. Now what I want to know is, if God Lessons could find the explanation, then why couldn't you? I suspect that it's because you are afraid to delve too deep for fear of undermining your ill-informed statements. Maybe you did discover what God Lessons discovered, but if you did, then surely you would have addressed the point he raised. Or worse still, you had no answer and kept it to yourself. Well, whatever it was, you come out smelling of something that is not roses. Too late now, Neff. You have demonstrated a clear tendency to cherry pick, just like you and your ilk do with the Bible. 14 of the so far discovered 98,000 human ERVs are found in the same location in the human genome, uh, in chimpanzee genome. However, this means that 99.99986% are not found in the same location. Yes, retroviruses are very common in most mammals, but why would you expect them to occur in the same locations? After all, a specific ERV has, at best, a 1 in 50 million chance of appearing in exactly the same genome location across two organisms. Bearing this in mind, then just one common ERV cannot be down to chance alone. So what do you think the odds are from the 14 that you quoted as being common between chimps and humans? I always thought it was seven, by the way. If it was commonality due to a designer, then why would it choose just 14 out of the thousands? Makes no sense, apart from common ancestry is the answer. Oh, by the way, even if you fail to accept the reason why PTERV1 is suppressed in humans, doesn't the fact that it is shared by rhesus monkeys, baboons and the great apes worry you? It should, because that smacks of common ancestry. What are called retroviruses are transposable elements of DNA, which means that they are capable of jumping around the genome and performing various functions. Well, retroviruses do make copies of themselves in random locations in the genome while still retaining their original position. Almost like adding information, isn't it, Neff? But we digress, as the topic of the video is the endogenous type of retrovirus. The Human Genome Project has verified that the, what evolutionists once called junk... Ah, the Human Genome Project, that great creationist organization. The term junk was a loose term to describe something that had no explanation at the time. I think very few scientists thought it was truly junk, and now we know that it is not junk at all. Okay, consider that. The list of specific... Uh, specific functions for what are called retroviruses now so extensive time doesn't allow me to even mention them all. In other words, you have not had time to read the complete findings of the Human Genome Project. The evolutionist is therefore stuck with believing that 23.6% of the human genome is comprised of viral DNA. How preposterous it is to believe that the instructions in the human genome could be comprised of so much viral DNA, considering that humans are intercellular creatures of incomparably greater complexity. So, let's get this straight. You use the Human Genome Project as your source, yet you disagree with them that this is viral originated DNA. Not just the human genome, Neff, but most mammals and certainly our close relatives. So, Neff, are you telling me that chimps are not intercellular creatures of great complexity? See, the Human Genome Project has discredited all these claims regarding retroviruses and pseudogenes and, and whatnot, and phylogeny, even. Neff, tell me, how long have you been part of the Human Genome Project team? Now, if the answer is zero, as we all suspect, then please stop misrepresenting them. If the truth be known, most scientists don't believe in evolution. 
most of them are afraid to state so that they either doubt it or don't believe in it because they know it would be the end of their jobs because uh, secular humanists, atheists, evolutionists control the uh, uh, peer review process and uh, academia. So nah, you know that's a lie. I'm sorry. Perhaps you could conduct a survey of the Human Genome Project team to verify that statement. Finally, I would stay well clear of such ill-informed sites from which you are reading. Such sites thrive on the gullible. I'm sorry.